Hello and welcome to National Focus for Tuesday, April 16, 2024. I am Julian Morris. In the headlines, Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt scared to address 9th Our Ocean Conference in Athens, Greece. Hydroponic system to modernize agriculture in Roseau. And the 14th edition of DBS National Reading Competition begins. The details of the headline stories and more when we return. Welcome back. Prime Minister the Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt will urge world leaders to implement climate smart initiatives to preserve the ocean's rich biodiversity when he addresses the 9th Our Ocean Conference scheduled to take place from April 16 to 17, 2024 in Athens, Greece. The Our Ocean Conference is being held under the theme Our Ocean and Ocean of Potential and will bring together heads of government, representatives of NGOs, and members of academia and civil society organizations to discuss effective approaches to protect the health of the world's oceans. The conference will address the transition to a blue economy and threats to the marine environment, such as biodiversity loss, climate change, unsustainable fishing practices, and marine pollution. The Dominican leader will also deliver remarks at the opening ceremony of the first Our Ocean Film Festival, highlighting Dominica's potential as a viable film and documentary destination. In the Prime Minister's absence from the state, Honorable Roland Royer, Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Blue and Green Economy, is serving as Acting Prime Minister. Residents of the city of Roseau are now better equipped to take up urban agriculture. Parliamentary Representative Honorable Melissa Popon Skerritt says in that regard, a successful urban agriculture training session was held recently with 50 individuals eager to delve into urban farming. One aspect of urban farming is hydroponics, which is the cultivation of plants and in nutrient solutions with or without soil to provide mechanical support. This urban farming training involved utilizing technology in farming, which is the hydroponic system, as well as vertical farming techniques. The impactful event was a collaborative effort with the dedicated staff of the Chinese Agricultural Technical Mission in One Mile Portsmouth, as well as three other esteemed training presenters, namely Mr. Vince Morgan, who was very pleased to have on board. He is the largest hydroponics farmer in Dominica. He was able to share on his experience as well as his success. Uh, Mr. Keanu Winston, who's the assistant principal of the Casabru Secondary School, who is also an agricultural science teacher who spoke about food security. And Mr. Batilia Bethel James, who's an avid farmer in the north of Dominica, as well as an agricultural development officer at the aid bank. The Honorable Parliamentary Representative says the combined expertise and commitment paved the way for an enlightening and empowering session for all attendees. Throughout the session, participants were immersed in a wealth of knowledge in a classroom setting, and then they were led to the outdoors to put their knowledge into practical use. From cultivating crops in limited spaces, farming on concrete, to harnessing sustainable farming techniques, the sessions covered a, di a diverse range of topics aimed at empowering individuals of all ages to become urban farming advocates and practitioners. The session targeted individuals of all ages. We had a few children on board who were learning to use technology in farming. And I must say my constituents of Rosa Central who lack farmland, which you will find in any city, they were particularly excited to learn new modern city farming techniques like planting in the alleyways, what type of crops and methods to grow on concrete, as well as the propagation of seedlings 
and the utilization of hydroponic system. In fact, a few were able to take home these systems to continue the process of growth in water and nutrients. The overarching goal is to encourage households to cultivate their own food within their immediate surroundings, utilizing smart and space-saving technologies. Whether it is only a conversation, conversational space or even a small porch that you have, a wall you may have, a, a concrete roof, you can plant something. By embracing these innovative farming methods, attendees were equipped with the tools, the seedlings, the knowledge needed to transform their living spaces into flourishing urban gardens. The interactive nature of the session fostered lively discussions and exchange of ideas, creating a vibrant atmosphere conducive to learning and growth. It is expected that other similar sessions will be held as the effort progresses. Attendees not only gain the theoretical knowledge, but they also had the opportunity to engage in the hands-on activities. And so as we celebrate the success of this event, we extend our sincere gratitude to all participants and facilitators for their active engagement and enthusiasm. We encourage all attendees to continue their journey in urban agriculture and to leverage the knowledge and the skills gained from this session to make a positive impact in homes and beyond. And for those who were unable to attend who have expressed interest, we look forward to welcoming you to future sessions as we continue to promote the transformative potential of urban farming in our city of Roseau. The 14th edition of the DBS National Reading Competition has kicked off. An opening ceremony was held on Monday at the Berrien Christian Academy as nine schools faced off in the first round of the competition. The nine schools included the Berrien Christian Academy, Pioneer Preparatory, Convent Preparatory, St. Mary's Primary, St. Martin's Primary, Rosa Primary, Ebenezer Seventh-day Adventist Primary, Christian Union Primary, and the Pidit Savan Primary School. This year, 56 primary schools will participate in the annual competition, which is being held under the theme Reading and Creole. For 16 years, DBS Radio has partnered with the Ministry of Education to bring this unique and important reading competition. We continue the legacy of the late Felix Henderson, whose vision was to encourage reading among Dominican children for today and tomorrow. This year, the competition is being held under the theme Reading and Creole, as DBS Radio carries on its mission to preserve the Creole language. So throughout the competition, we will hear from the students themselves who have been taught a few words and sentences in Creole in addition to some Creole performances. So dear readers and students, reading can change your lives, open up your imaginations and minds, and even set you on a path that you never thought was possible. Reading not only allows you to expand your vocabulary and knowledge, but can also assist in improving your own writing skills. Students will be expected to read three pieces and will be judged based on criteria given to each school. The National Reading Competition continues to be a yearly event looked forward to by the schools, students, parents, and the wider Dominican community, both here and abroad. Three rounds form part of the competition, and students will be judged based on their reading of a narrative passage, news item, and a sports item. A panel of three judges will score the readers according to the rubric provided. And each school has been provided with that rubric, and I'm sure you are accustomed to it by now. Acting Chief Cultural Officer Mr. Olson Matthew commended DBS for its commitment to the preservation of the Creole language and other aspects of Dominican culture. I want to extend commendations to the groups and individuals who have made this their cause and championed that cause over the years, not just in talk, but with action that reflects the goal of inculcating certain traditional aspects into the daily lives of our youth, that they in turn will grow and share. That is how we preserve culture. So Keck, Creole Heartbeat, DBS Radio, the Ministry of Education and the likes, know that the cultural division is here to support in whatever way that our resources permit. 
Meanwhile, District Education Officer for the Western District, Ms. Karine Burnett, congratulated the students on being chosen to represent their schools in the competition. Today is a very special day for our students and it marks a celebration of literacy, a celebration of imagination, a celebration of power of words. As we gather here, be reminded of the profound impact that reading has on the lives, shaping our thoughts and igniting our creativity. To the students participating today, I applaud your dedication to reading. Your passion for reading not only enriches your minds, but also inspires those around you. She encouraged the young students to make reading a part of their lives as its impact will go beyond the competition. She also advised them in preparation for the competition. Students, I do not want you to think about the benefits of reading only for today, like winning the competition or securing some interesting awards or prizes. But think about reading for the future. Think about reading for life. As you read, I want you to bear in mind that reading is not just about calling out words. You have to make meaning out of what you read. That's why today it is important that you read with expression. Try to read fluently. Read with proper intonation. Read with clarity. I also want you to give attention to punctuation and also make eye contact with your audience while you read. I assure you that the judges will be looking for that today. Minister for Education, Honorable Octavia Alfred, says government will continue to put initiatives in place to support the country's children while ensuring that every child succeeds. The government of Dominica makes every effort to ensure that our students have what is necessary to ensure that teaching and learning is effective and that every child succeeds. This includes conducive learning spaces, smart rooms, libraries, writing stations, and reading materials. We also make sure that our teachers receive training. The, everybody pay attention to that. The World Population Review of 2022 placed Dominica at number eight out of the 10 most educated countries in the region with a literacy rate of 94%. Put your hands together for yourselves and your school and your people and Ministry of Education and DBS and all those who are making the effort. We continue to see improvements in the number of students reading at their grade level, thus improvements in both local and regional assessment. You're watching National Focus. More when we return. Ride safe, wear a helmet, safer roads in the nature aisle. This message was brought to you by the government of the Commonwealth of Dominica. Welcome back. Dominica's National Medical Laboratory has joined the rest of the globe in the annual observance and a celebration of Medical Laboratory Professionals Week which runs from April 14 to 20, 2024. This year's celebration is held under the theme, The Lab is Everything, recognizing the invaluable contributions of clinical and public health laboratory professionals behind every patient. The National Lab, together with our local, regional and international counterparts, relish the opportunity to highlight medical lab scientists and bring into focus the importance of our work in the field under a most fitting theme, the lab is everything. Indeed, we can proudly say that the COVID-19 pandemic 
underscores the theme, and everyone here at this juncture would agree that with increasing apprehension and fear gripping the populace, all eyes were on the medical lab. And yes, at this juncture, the lab was everything to the public. In the delivery of healthcare, there is not a more involved department in the lives of the populace than that of the lab. The National Laboratory serves a dual role as both clinical lab and that of the public health lab. It is the main provider for lab services to the Dominica China Friendship Hospital, the entire primary healthcare system in Dominica, and in addition, supports the delivery of lab services to primary clientele. This week provides an opportune time to increase public understanding and appreciation for clinical laboratory personnel and also secure the future of this health profession. The lab therefore has the responsibility to spread the word about the profession, to attract young, creative and energetic minds to carry the mantle of this noble profession into the future. This celebration therefore is important to us as we seek to protect the future of this profession. And so the National Lab has increased its efforts in building awareness by targeting secondary school students on island to view the exhibits of the facet laboratory activities with a view to ignite the interest in the profession. In addition, we will be participating in another secondary school outreach where the objective is to continue to disseminate pertinent information regarding medical lab science as a viable career option. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Social Services, Dr. Laura Esprit, elaborated on the crucial role of medical lab professionals in diagnosing and treating of patients. Oftentimes, persons would think of, can we say, just nurses and doctors as medical professionals, forgetting that there is a wide cadre of staff who, in one way or another, they support the diagnosis and management of patients. And this cadre includes all laboratory professionals. Now imagine if our doctors provided the various diagnoses based on the presenting signs and symptoms alone, and the nurses implemented the management care plans in the absence of laboratory and diagnostic investigations, can we envision the negative impact on the health and well-being of patients? It's like you're feeling ill. Doctor says he thinks it's so and so. Yet there is no laboratory evidence to show whether that this clinical suspicion, so to speak, is correct or not. So it's either he, meaning the doctor, treats by trial and error, solely based on his clinical evidence, or he refuses to treat or delays treatment. Either way, the patient is the one who suffers. And we do know the far-reaching consequences, especially in emergencies and life-threatening conditions, and of course, as well as delayed diagnosis. And Dr. Monroe put it very well. The doctor becomes like a blind man climbing a steep flight of stairs. Thanks for that, Doc. So essentially, the value of the laboratory, the value of its technician, the value of other staff, as well as the numerous services that are offered are super essential and critical to the overall healthcare administration and of course, the outcome of each patient. Senior technologist Mrs. Ronella Robin Coffey represented the national epidemiologist Dr. Shaladin Ahmed enunciating the vital role of the medical laboratory in healthcare. Clinical symptoms alone are often insignificant for confirming a diagnosis, thus highlighting the essential role of a lab tests in providing definitive diagnosis and guiding subsequent treatment decisions. During the recent pandemic, Dominica stood out as the first country among the OECS to establish in-country PCR testing capabilities for COVID-19. We are delighted to mention that we now have the capabilities to conduct PCR testing for dengue, chikungunya, and Zika viruses. Additionally, our gene expert testing capacity allows for the testing of TB and COVID-19 in large volumes. Throughout the year, we depend on lab services to monitor patient progress, evaluate the effectiveness of control measures, and identify emerging pathogens or disease processes. In essence, the lab forms the cornerstone of public health surveillance systems, providing the essential foundation for understanding and responding 
to diseases effectively. Signed, Dr. Ahmed. Medical Laboratory Professionals Week has been recognized since 1975 to honor laboratory professionals at the forefront of saving lives. Member of Parliament for the Grand Bay constituency, Honorable Dr. Vince Henderson is pleased to see the many developments currently ongoing in his constituency. This includes the ongoing construction of a new housing development in center, as well as the rehabilitation of the Grand Bay Community Center. The community center being constructed and I'm very excited to see uh, with a local contractor from Grand Bay moving ahead with that project and it seems to be going well. We, we're very happy for that. So it will service the center but also the entire Grand Bay community. We are also now tenders have gone out for the, the completion of the Grand Bay Community Center which is another center that will serve the lower part of the community and that is where the, the, the village council is, is currently housed and that will help to serve as a hurricane shelter. So we're looking forward to that. The Grand Bay MP is pleased with progress of the housing development. He says works on the commercial buildings as well as the roads are ongoing. The housing project is progressing well. Uh, soon there are a few units to be completed, the roads to be done, and as we said, the community center to be built. We also have the commercial units to be completed, but almost there, as I've seen. And we're getting there. So that, that is, we're going to provide at least 40 units to residents of, of Grand Bay and the remaining 80, um, 40 something units to the residents of Dubic because we are replace, um, replacing, or not just relocating, but replacing the units that were destroyed by the passage of Hurricane Maria for, for where the Dubic people once resided in, in, in that part of center. So we are, we are getting there. And we are very excited, for, you know, for the, the, we're looking forward with great anticipation to the completion of those facilities. Rehabilitation work is also ongoing on Matutu's Park. We are also working on Matutu's Park. The, yesterday as well, we had an engineer and a, and, a, and a contractor on site looking at the designs and trying to see how we can further improve. In the coming weeks, we will engage some of the community leaders to finalize the plan because we have been, we have gone through several different versions and I hope this will be the last. We, we know the Ministry of Culture has on its books since last year an allocation to com commence that project. It will not co finance the entire project but it will complete the first phase. So we're looking forward to that and that is, that is ongoing. So we, we are very, very happy in, in the Grand Bay constituency for the support that we are receiving from the government. Dr. Henderson also highlighted the reopening of the Grand Bay Primary School, which was severely damaged during Hurricane Maria. We have reopened the Grand Bay Primary School for the first time this academic year. There are still a few little issues, actually, that we are addressing, but the school has been opened. We now, we recently, as recent as, as this week, we moved the, the preschool into, into the actual facility in Highland, so that is also very exciting for us. We have some, some improvements to, to do as we continue, but we, we are now housed in our school, uh, having been inconvenient since the passage of Hurricane Maria. So, so there's a lot of stuff going on here, and we, we're looking forward to the completion of all these infrastructural works to us to, us to enhance and improve the, the community of Grand Bay. Coming up next, the Creole News Highlights with General Jacob. Bienvenue à ce nouveau Creole, nom de Dieu nous Jacob. Ministre Santé a observé Lab Week, semaine Lab en Dominique. Ministre Santé, Juin et puis Media Conference en Conference Public Service Union hier. Officier Ministre Santé discuté activité pour semaine là. Melvin Challenger qui travaille en Blood Bank en l'hôpital Dominical China Friendship. Semaine ça là, nous ca célébrer Lab Week. Jeudi là nous Nous, nous tenions en media conference. Où là nous ouvrons la brique. Um, demain, nous allons nous exhibit. Où là nous allons inviter toutes les écoles um, secondary pour venir voir ça nous allons faire à la lab, à la lab là, à la laboratoire. Et um, 
nous avons dit que nous avons dit que nous avons dit que nous avons pour que parler contre la professionnelle. Et puis nous avons parlé et puis étudiants contre le travail lab. Nous avons parlé contre le laboratoire à l'école là pour ces étudiants là connaître ce que nous avons fait dans le laboratoire. Um, et le samedi, night, um, samedi, samedi soir, nous sommes en dîner. Nous avons eu un award. Nous avons eu un award pour les um, gens qui ont été à l'abattoire. 14 éditions, compétition à l'école qui a commencé lundi. Burien Christian Academy et puis neuf d'autres écoles qui ont commencé la première ou une compétition. C'est l'école là, c'est Burien Christian Academy, Pioneer Preparatory School, Convent Prep, St. Mary's Primary, St. Martin's Primary, Rousseau Primary, Ebeniza Seventh-day Adventist Primary, Christian Union Primary et puis Petit Savan Primary School. Dans les 56 écoles primary qui ont participé en compétition. Pour cela, c'est Reading and Creole. Lee et puis Creole. Moshe Olsen, Matthew, chef officier culte, complimenté DBS Radio. Et de DBS qui a préservé le langage créole et puis culte Dominique. Officier éducation pour le district l'Est, complimenté, c'est l'église l'école là. Ministre éducation qui a demandé aux étudiants, ça c'est l'église l'école, pour les plus livres. Parliamentary representative Gwambe, honorable Vincent Nessendi, le gouvernement a bâti des facilités neuf en Guambé. Les gens qui ont bénéficié de la carrière du gouvernement a bâti en centre. On a vu Vincent Nesson qui a souhaité un et puis le ministère de la Sécurité, on a vu Raybon Blackmore, la semaine passée, pour montrer les médias, le projet du gouvernement a fait pour développer Guambé. Nous avons construit une place neuf pour ces gens qui ont bâti et aussi pour les gens qui ont Uh, center, ça a, ça a allé bien. Uh, nous avons construit une place pour les pour gens venir, pour les réunions, pour les affaires, pour, en anglais, comme il dit, center, nous avons fait ça. So, ça, a, ça, a, ça a bâti et bien, nous avons nous, nous, nous il qu'il fini dans combien de mois, peut-être six mois, mais. Tout de suite, nous avons fini tout le travail là, et nous avons ni place, nous avons eu ça, nous avons eu ça, en centre. Et bien, c'est un travail qui a fait nous content. Honorable Vincent Nesson dit cricket qui a joué, Geneva Plainfield, il a tenu un game cricket la semaine passée. Ça, c'est samedi passé. Actuellement, en Geneva Plainfield, nous avons eu nous ball qui a joué. Ball, ball qui a joué, et bien, c'est pays, Windward Islands, nous avons joué ball pour ces jeunes gens là qui en bas 19 l'année, il a joué, et bien, yoka, yo, yo, um, samedi, nous avons joué avec go, um, joué, ka, ka, eve, ka, um, ma, ma ka changé, que mon ka joué, mais tout ça, ça m'a connaît. Il ka le ni en l'eau moun, parce que pour six mètres là, mon gwambe, yo sorti, yo vini voué, Bon là, il y a supporté ces jeunes gens là, il y a mon côté de ça. C'est depuis sept ans nous jouons en Santa. Et actuellement, je suis content pour voir ce qu'il a fait là. Nous avons joué au ball, nous avons joué au football. Et bien, c'est un monde qui a joué au Rondas, nous avons joué au Rondas aussi. Ce place là, ça a mangé. Et bien, je suis content de voir ça. Et bien, c'est un bon temps pour le pour, pour monde qui a joué. Honorable Vincent Nelson dit que le gouvernement commence d'autres projets en Guambé. Nous avons commencé l'école première, nous avons commencé l'école là. Nous avons joué toujours, nous avons débuté pour faire, mais c'est négo là, nous avons allé à l'école. Je suis content de ça. Ça, c'est tout à ce nouvel en créole. Non, M. Geno Jacob, au revoir. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS Dominique on Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitter. You can also drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm. From all of us here on the GIS News Production team, I am Julian Morris. Thanks for watching.